just got in some counterfeit gold coins. <clears throat> this one, the luster is way off. Of course, the dealer that brought it to me wrote bad on the back. But what's really interesting is that if we do an x-ray test on it, Starts out looking okay, but then we get this silver popping up. There is not supposed to be silver in U.S. gold coins in that era. So this was clearly made from something that was melted down that had a trace of silver in it, because the U.S. Mint would not have made that mistake in 1910. They were way too professional at that point to do that. So this is a counterfeit. Now the good news is, is it's still 90% gold, so we just buy them and melt them accordingly. Same deal on this guy. It's also a counterfeit. If you look down below, the date, the 1895, the denticles are very rough. The luster is off on the entire thing. At first glance, if you didn't know any better, you'd think, hey, that's a gold coin. That's United States Mint made. But the details on it are just a little mushy all the way around and just a little off. And if we do the same thing where we x-ray it, we notice this time it's a little too high in gold and there's that trace of silver. So whoever made that made it from jewelry gold or they had a little bit of silver in there that their refining techniques were too crude to uh, remove that trace of silver. So we know that one's bad. <clears throat> Same with some of these sovereigns. There's a lot of fake sovereigns out there. Uh, they look great at first. They've got luster. They're actually struck. But then, when we go to x-ray them, the Brits would not have made that mistake. They would not have made the gold too rich in their sovereigns. Uh, so that one's obviously a bad one, because that's a big mistake. This coin here, you can tell it's fake because it's a cast copy, definitely not struck. The edges are polished, and fortunately somebody had the good sense to strike 18 carat in the bottom. So we know that that one's bad as well. So that one will go into the melt. Uh, this sovereign also came up too high. The mint luster was just a little off on the thing quality just didn't seem quite right. A little bit too thick on the strike. This coin was sold to me as a counterfeit. It's actually okay. The alloy came out just fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and shoot this one for comparison to the others. And as you can see it's right in there at 900 gold, 10% copper, which is exactly where it's supposed to be. And there's no silver the iron is due to dirt on the surface of the coin, not actually in the coin. But that coin comes in dead on right where it should be. It also has the right luster, but there's a lot of people that are a little more careful on it than they should be, which is fine. We're still going to melt this down anyway since they're not bringing a premium right now. It's a common date. So, these are all going to now meet their doom. So we're going to take these and smash them to show that they've been destroyed. Now we're in the workshop. We're going to align these to make sure they're destroyed permanently. We'll put the large counterfeits down first in ascending order. I'm going to throw that in the furnace anyway, it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to crush them in a hydraulic press. That way people can be assured they've been totally destroyed. There's 
no way these are going to fool anybody anymore. And it makes for some interesting uh, brockages that you don't see every day. But now that they're just industrial metal scrap, they will be treated as such. The next step is to throw them into the furnace. So that's what we're going to do with all this stuff that we picked up. Make a nice homogeneous alloy out of all this junk. And even coins that are not retail friendly at the moment get melted. Now we're going to put in the ones we just smashed. because nobody's buying those at a premium right now. Now it's nice and hot. gold bar that's it takes care of the counterfeits no longer an issue